Good morning and uh, welcome to Kino City. So we've been here in the Yukon, which is a territory. I believe it's a territory, not a province in Canada. I, I, sh I should probably know that. It's in like Northern Canada. I've never been this far North in Canada. Super cool place, beautiful, beautiful scenery, beautiful place. And then we're in this super tiny town of Kino City. And it's one of the coolest little towns that I've ever been to. So many interesting buildings and even more importantly, really interesting people, super nice people interesting characters. It's been amazing following the people here, getting to know them, just getting a glimpse into their world. And I've been posting some of the BTS stuff on Instagram stories. If you, if you don't follow me on Instagram, you can follow me now if, if you want to. I do a lot of kind of behind the scenes stuff on Instagram stories of shoots like this, for example. But one of the things that's been asked a lot is about the gear that I'm using because it's not the kind of gear that I normally use for especially YouTube videos. So I thought today we would talk about the difference between cinema cameras and DSLR are mirrorless cameras. And here's what I've been using for this project. All right, so for this dock project, I am shooting on the Canon C300 Mark II. So this is, that's the brains of this setup, is a C300 Mark II. That's, that's this portion of the camera. And this is a cinema camera. This is, I guess they're maybe like, second highest model, third, it's kind of in the middle of their cinema line of cameras. But then I have a whole bunch of other stuff kind of built around this camera also. First off, super important for me, this camera does come with an LCD screen, but it's it's not the best. It's not the best LCD screen in my opinion. I don't like it that much. It's, it's okay, it works, it works fine. But I really like this, the small HD 502 monitor. I've had this thing for like at least three years, and I really like this monitor. It's got everything I need, um, you know, from putting on a LUT to waveform, false color peaking, anything and everything you want in a really easy to manage way. You can make these things called pages, which basically means you can customize what tools are being shown at that time. You can just flip through the different customizations. Then a super, super important thing is the lens and this it's probably one of, if not my favorite lens. It's the Sigma 18 to 35 uh, f 1.8, and it is just a really, really nice lens. It's super fast, and it's a zoom lens, so like you're covering a really nice range. and And anywhere between 18 and 35 is usually where I like shooting, anyways. So this is pretty much the perfect lens for me. The only downside is that it only works on crop sensor or super 35 sensors, so it doesn't work on full frame. So I can't use it on my 60 Mark II or my 1DX2. But this lens. I really like this lens. Then we have the microphone. We have the Rode NTG3 with this little dead cat thing. It, that's probably not the best windscreen, but it, it works for now. Um, but the NTG3 mic, really good, high quality mic. This is the mic that I use in my studio setups all the time. And then if I'm doing something like a documentary like this, and I, uh, we want some audio coming into camera. Johnny's doing audio, but uh, we want this camera to kind of have a, it's almost like a backup, plus we can also use it to sync and just figure out what's going on. Um, so that's what's happening here. And then speaking of audio, um, something that a lot of you might not know, especially if you've just gotten into film stuff, um, what we're doing here, it, because we're shooting so much stuff and, and we have uh, Johnny recording audio and then we have this camera recording video and then Johnny might be also recording video, we want all of those things to sync up perfectly. We don't want to have to deal with um, using some sort of third-party plugin or having to just fiddle around and have to m manually match things. We want everything to sync up. So how do you do that? It's by time code. So you can actually force time code, a time code into this camera, which corresponds to the time code on the audio that Johnny's recording. And how that's done is through this little tiny box here, it just jams into the time code here. And through that, we're putting the same time code into the camera 
into the audio so it all syncs up when you're editing. And then lastly, I, I kind of forgot to mention, uh, I'm using this, um, I actually don't even remember what company this is, but it's just like an articulating arm so I can put this um, small HD monitor wherever I need it to be, whether it's me filming down low, I have kind of in this position, or if I need to be up higher, I can tilt it down. Um, yeah, I don't know if this is the best articulating arm, but I do like this one because you can replace a lot of the parts and you can also build it out. You can make it bigger or smaller depending on what cameras you're using. And then with respect to stabilizers, we actually chose to shoot handheld for this documentary but uh, this is pretty heavy it's a pretty heavy setup I don't know exactly how many pounds but it's pretty heavy it gets tiring after a while plus it's a bit shaky to just film handheld so how do we fix that I have the answer this contraption right here so this thing is called the easy rig and it's basically like a backpack you put it on your back and then you you put on the camera here you strap on the camera here on the handle and then instead of your hands taking all the weight of the camera, your back or your whole body essentially is taking the weight of the camera and you can you can shoot for way longer, have more stable footage. Uh, this will not only make your shooting uh, experience way more enjoyable, way more fun, but it'll also pay off in the long run when you've saved your back when you're like 40 and you, you don't have all these crazy back problems. So this is my setup. This is what it looks like when we're out there filming uh, this documentary. Uh, this is kind of my go-to setup if I'm shooting handheld. And you can see I can just go lower. I can I can do hands off. Obviously, I'm, I'm not, not going to do that, but I, I could. I could do that. If I want to go higher, I could just lift it up. And my hands are not lifting the camera really at all. They're just stabilizing. That's it. Stabilizing and moving around. I love this kind of setup for handheld stuff. But let's talk about cinema cameras versus DSLR mirrorless cameras. So cinema cameras are built just for video. That's all they're for. They're built entirely for video. All the functions, the ergonomics, everything is built with, with video in mind. And then there's DSLR mirrorless cameras, which are photography cameras, they're photo cameras, which more recently have been able to do video. And, and nowadays the, the video capabilities are, are really impressive, even in the DSLR mirrorless cameras. So cinema cameras like RED, Airy, uh, some of the Canon cameras, some of the Sony cameras, Blackmagic, there's a lot of different cinema cameras. And then DSLR mirrorless like Canon, Sony, Panasonic, Fujifilm, Olympus, uh, the list goes on, Nikon, uh, yeah, there's a lot of them. So why would you choose a cinema camera that can only do video and usually they also cost more. Well, uh, sometimes you actually shouldn't, but other times you definitely should. So, so let me explain. Uh, cinema cameras are built for a certain kind of filmmaking, whereas uh, the DSLR mirrorless are kind of built, maybe not built, but they, because of their form factor and the things they include, they're, they're kind of used for a different kind of filmmaking. And these are not hard, fast rules or anything like that, but, but because of the way they are, they kind of fall into these different categories. So for example, if I'm doing YouTube videos, vlogging and stuff, I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna have a setup like this. It's, it would be ridiculous. It would, it would be, it would, it would not be smart. So I'm using a DSLR, I'm using a 60 Mark II right now. But then if I'm shooting a higher end commercial or, or a documentary, something like this, it doesn't make sense to shoot on something like the 6D Mark II. There would actually be way more pain points to using this camera than this, even though this, this looks kind of ridiculous to use. And then there's other projects like weddings, for example, that you could really go either way. There's benefits and negatives to both sides of using cinema cameras or DSLR mirrorless cameras. So, so it's not cut and dry. Uh, there, there are advantages to both sides and there's disadvantages to both sides. So, so why don't we actually go through kind of the pros and cons of using uh, DSLRs and cinema cameras? Because in the end, that's all that actually matters is that you know why you're using the tool that you're using and that you know that it's the best tool for you and for your project. That's, that's all that matters. It really doesn't matter what camera you're using as long as you know why you're using it. So let's start off with the pros for cinema. Uh, the quality of the video is definitely the best quality. It's gonna be way better than the DSLR cameras uh, for the most part. The colors, the image, the dynamic range is way better. There's so many different things with the image that are just a lot better with cinema cameras because they're built specifically just for video. There's also usually more options for a recording with a cinema camera. So you can have different flavors of codecs. So you can have a really 
really beefy codec that stores a lot of information. Then you can have a lighter one and somewhere in between. There's more options for the recording codec, which, which also means that there's better codecs on cinema cameras. That's a really big thing. The codec is better. So that's gonna be better for color grading. It's gonna look better overall. The codec is also gonna be most likely better for editing, most likely. But again, these are not hard, fast rules. Another big thing is that audio capabilities on a cinema camera like this are a lot better. So you have XLR inputs, so you can put real microphones on here and not just, you know, like small microphones into the audio jack. Um, you can jam time code, things like that you could never do on something like a DSLR, which again is, is a very specific use thing, but, but it is another capability that, that cinema cameras have and DSLR mirrorless cameras don't have. And then lastly, there's a lot of pro features in cinema cameras, things like zebra peaking, uh, maybe there's false color, uh, you can monitor, so you can film in a flat log profile, you guys know that's that's the best way to film, but then you can monitor, you can add a LUT on there that's not actually being recorded, but you just see the footage through a LUT, so it doesn't look all, all you know gray and desaturated and no contrast, gross. You can actually see what it might look look like afterwards once you've color graded a little bit. So that, that's, there's all these little pro features and you can kind of see all these buttons on the side here. There's all these little pro features that are in cinema cameras that you don't get in the DSLR mirrorless. And then the pros for the DSLR mirrorless side, I would say, first of all, size, they're really small, which has a lot of really nice benefits. Uh, secondly, they take photos. So if you need video and photo, obviously you wanna go with a DSLR mirrorless camera. That's a big bonus. Smaller file sizes, because the codecs usually aren't as beefy, you're gonna have smaller file sizes, which, is, which can be a really good thing when you don't actually need all that information. They're cheaper in price in general. Uh, they might have in-body stabilization, which cinema cameras, I don't think any of them have in-body stabilization. And then lastly, one of the really big pros I would say is that you don't need as big a, a stabilizers or support systems to make this camera move or do different things. They can be a lot smaller in size, whereas if your camera is this big, then you're gonna you're gonna need a big gimbal to handle this thing. And then the con side cinema, it's expensive. They're really expensive usually, and a lot of times it doesn't even make sense to buy them because they're that expensive. They can be, you know, up to 50, 60, 100, $150,000, super expensive. That's a big con to cinema cameras. They're big and heavy. This. This is really big compared to this setup, which again, uh, needs bigger stabilizers. Those are big cons. Um, depending on what kind of projects you're doing, it can take up so much more time when you need bigger stabilizers to do the movements that you want with a camera like this. Usually there's no autofocus. This one does, but a lot of the cinema cameras don't have autofocus and then no in-body stabilization, which is, I, I feel like they should start incorporating that, but so far they haven't. Uh, a truck just pulled up. I hope that's not gonna mess up the audio, but let's go to the cons of the DSLR mirrorless. So first off, I would say that the image isn't as good as on the cinema cameras because they're not just built for video. They're also doing photography. So, you know, you're having to compromise on some things. Uh, the codecs are a lot worse, so they're gonna fall apart uh, faster when you're color grading and all that stuff. Less dynamic range usually. Uh, if you don't know what dynamic range is, look it up. But dynamic range is massive for having a really nice image. Limited audio capabilities. Usually there isn't XLR inputs and all that kind of stuff. You can't jam time code in. And then lastly, it's a lot harder to build out a DSLR like I've built out this cinema camera. They're kind of, the ergonomics are kind of made so that you can add a monitor, you can add microphones, you can add all of this stuff, whereas it, it would be really hard to attach all of these things onto a DSLR. You'd have to have some sort of cage and it would just get awkward really fast. And actually, uh, Johnny, who's who's directing, but also shooting some of the stuff, he's on a on a very different system. So uh, why don't I actually go ask him what, what he's using for, for uh, his doc shooting. Guys, if you don't know this, this is Johnny. Uh, oh. He's kind of the, the creator behind the documentary, director. Yeah. What are you shooting with? Uh, this is the Ursa, Blackmagic Ursa. Cinema Cable. camera, cinema camera, right? Yeah, this is cinema camera, kind of heavy. So why 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 did you choose the, the Ursa Mini? I mean, I love the picture of Blackmagic cameras in general, but the Ursa is... I just like the cinema cameras so much, just because it's... With an easy rig, this is not heavy. Like I can just walk around like this and drink coffee and stuff. So it's not all that, day long. Yeah, all day long. The but. image quality <laughs> is so nice. The dynamic range and 
just the ND filters built in. It's an easier camera to do cinematic style filmmaking with. So why would you, why are you not, you're using this camera, the GH5 for, for vlogging. Yeah, yeah, this camera, it's, it's sturdy, but it's not as sturdy as like a cinema camera. It, 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 it's like, <laughs> it can break, it pretty. can break pretty easily. It has happened. It's known to happen. <laughs> to some <laughs> at times yeah sloppy people but if you were to vlog on this thing oh, that is <laughs> right, possible show us, show us. i've been there done that no easy no, 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 no worries. so wait this like, is a vlogging could, camera yeah, yeah, this is a vlogging camera this is the best vlogging setup you could do this all so everybody's gonna have a different opinion about cameras and don't worry if someone says that I don't like your camera or, or I don't think your camera is good. It doesn't matter. It's not the equivalent of someone saying that I don't like your kid. It is not the same thing. It's just a camera and, and I, I don't also fully buy the cliche of it, it's not the equipment, it's just the person behind the camera. I think it's more choosing the right cameras and choosing the right tools for the for your project for your style that's really what matters um, but it does matter what gear you choose it but it, it it's not saying that one camera or one tool is the best tool for everything bigger more expensive more resolution is not necessarily better you just got to find the right tool for your job for your style all right we gotta get back to uh filming the dock uh, last night we got some super, really incredible footage. Um, the, how you know if you're getting really good stuff is when you're when you're watching what you're filming on the LCD screen and it already feels like you're watching a movie or a documentary. That's when you know you have some really good stuff. And one of the coolest things I think about filmmaking is the fact that you get to meet and talk to like the most interesting people that you would never ever get to talk to or meet in person. And you just get to have these really cool conversations. I just really like that part of documentary filmmaking especially. You just get to meet the most interesting people that you would never ever get to meet otherwise. All right, for, for real, I, I, gotta, I gotta get back to doc filming. So uh, I'll see you guys later. I, I don't know if I'll film any more videos here, but uh, I'll see you guys back in Toronto, if not in the Yukon. Bye.